Hello everybody. Today we will be going through how to install TensorFlow with PyCharm. If you've ever gone through or are currently going through the process of setting up TensorFlow, you'll know it's not a trivial process and it can actually be quite a pain. But today we'll be doing a step-by-step -step guide on how to install TensorFlow and get it to work with PyCharm. So to install TensorFlow, we'll be using Anaconda. It's a Python package manager. Many of you may already have this installed. However, if you don't, we're going to first head over to Anaconda's um, documentation page. And over here on the left hand side, you can see the installation for installing on Windows and installing on Mac. For installing on Windows and installing on Mac, there is an installer available that you can download and just follow step by step. For Linux, um, there is a bash script available um, and the bash script is also available in Mac. I'm currently on a Mac, so I'll be installing it through the command line. So we're going to first come down here to using the command line install. And in step one, you're going to see Mac OS installer. So let's click this. And if we scroll to the bottom, we'll see right here, 64-bit command line installer. Or if you want to, want to use your graphical installer, you can click that one as well too. So once it's downloaded, we want to go to the location that the file was downloaded to in our command line, which will most likely be the downloads folder. So before I get started, I just want to say that my uh, command line or terminal is, is a bit riced out. So if you're noticing discrepancies between colors and auto suggestion features, um, don't worry, just simply follow the steps. Um, it won't make a difference to the actual final process. So first let's go to the downloads folder and then let's list all the files here. And there we can see the Anaconda file that we downloaded. So once we're here, we want to run the bash script. So Anaconda will be installed in our system and we can then have access to the conda command in our terminal. And we can run the script by entering bash and the full path to the downloaded script. So first we want to get the full path and a convenient way to do that is by typing in real path um, or sorry, using the real path command and typing in a few characters starting from the script and then tab to autocomplete. And this will give us the full file path. And we want to copy this full file path <clears throat> and then to run the script, we just want to type bash and then the full file path. So once you press enter, you're just going to follow the prompt and enter yes. I already have Anaconda installed, so I won't be installing it again. But once it is installed, we can verify the installation by entering in conda list. And if you see a series of packages like this, you know it's been installed correctly. Alternatively, you can also type in conda tac b, and it should give you the version number of conda. And if you get some output like this, um, we know that conda has been installed correctly. Note, your conda version probably won't be the same as mine. All right, great. Now that we have Anaconda installed, we can begin by creating a new virtual environment in which we will install TensorFlow 2. And we can do this by typing in conda, create, and then we can pass in the name of our new environment, which is going to be test, and then the Python version we'll be using. So to decide the Python version for our environment, we want to make sure it's compatible with the latest release of TensorFlow. So let's check currently on TensorFlow 2, it supports Python 3.6 to 3.8, so we should be good. So then we just press enter. Yes, I already had one created, so I'm just going to overwrite it. And now we will be creating the environment. Great. So we've created an environment. And to enter it, we can simply um, enter conda and then activate and the name of environment, in this case, test. So now we are inside our new virtual environment. And just as a reference to get out to get out of the environment, you simply do conda deactivate. And then we'll be outside our environment. So let's get back in. And 
end, now we want to actually install TensorFlow. So we can use pip, which already comes bundled with Anaconda, and install TensorFlow into our system. So note, this will just install TensorFlow to run through your CPU. To configure it to run through your GPU, it's more of an involved process. And you're going to need a compatible NVIDIA GPU, and you need to install the NVIDIA and CUDA drivers. And you can read more about that over here in the official GPU support page. And it can walk you through getting the appropriate drivers installed. So we're just going to run pip install tensorflow. And we're going to try that again by spelling it correctly, which I'm sure will help. <laughs> So there you go. Now it's being installed. And it is a bit of a larger file, so it might take some time to get installed. OK. Now that we can see we have installed TensorFlow, it just took a couple minutes to get ready. Um, we also probably want to install Keras. Keras is a high-level API that works on top of TensorFlow. And it's quite convenient and used very often. So some of you may be asking, why we need to use a virtual environment to begin with. And it's mostly so each project can have its own dependencies. And each time you're running a project, you have to downgrade or upgrade these dependencies to match the current project you're working on. Another upside is the fact that if anyone else needs to run your code, you can provide the project level requirements, which won't include all the Python packages you've installed throughout your system that you may need in other projects, but not for the current one. OK, so in our virtual environment, we have the correct Python flavor installed. Uh, we have TensorFlow installed now, and we have Keras installed. And now we just want to set up PyCharm and link our new project to the new interpreter that we created. So let's start up PyCharm. So let's create a new project. And we want to use, from down here, previously configured interpreter, and it's going to be available. We can click the three dots. And let's go to Conda environment on the left-hand side. And we want to select an interpreter. To select the interpreter, we have to find the Python file path to, our, uh, to the virtual environment we just created. So. To do that, we can just type in where Python inside of our virtual environment. And you'll see I got two responses. So one was for my um, system level Python, which is in user bin. And the second was for the specific environment that I created. So you can see it's under Miniconda and test bin Python. So I'm already inside a test. We come down here come to Python, select OK. Great. Select OK again. And we're going to create our project. So now it's just setting up our workspace. So once we do that, and we've configured our project to use the correct interpreter, we should have TensorFlow and Keras available to us. And we can check this by, let's just make a new um, Python file. Let's call it test.py. And we should be able to import TensorFlow and also import Keras. And then We're just going to print out the packages. Really, as long as you're able to import them, we know that the interpreter had been select, um, set up correctly. OK, so now to make sure we've configured our interpreter correctly and we're able to import TensorFlow and Keras, um, we just want to run our Python file. And we can do that by adding in a configuration to the right-hand side for the file 
or you can wait until our workspace was fully indexed. And then we can just right click on our test.py and select run. Now, this process might take a couple minutes, but since I've already ran this once before, um, you can see that it printed out fairly quickly. Module TensorFlow, module Kara, process finished without any errors. So great, we know the installation has been successful. So thank you guys for watching the video. Please like and subscribe if you found this useful and happy machine learning.